It is in our human nature to want to know the outcome of an endeavor before we begin. Are we going to be successful? Are we going to fail? Our belief and confidence that our actions are going to translate into success is what keeps us going as human beings. That is also the primary yet elusive goal in drug discovery. How can we predict before years of testing what molecules are actually going to translate into medicines of the future? Drug discovery has been described as trying to find a needle in the haystack. That analogy falls a little bit short because we don't exactly know what the needle looks like. We understand what we ultimately want to happen therapeutically in a human, but trying to understand what molecule we should go and make, that's the needle that we're looking for. And it's within a vast opportunity space of millions of molecules. It's a bit miraculous that, um, that we ever discover the molecule that is safe and effective. Typically, what has occurred in the past is it has been a funnel-based approach of drug discovery, where it's widest at the top and gets narrower as molecules progress. And we'll start with many, many molecules, and then working our way through and narrowing as we go to ultimately arrive at what we believe is a single molecule that should move forward into clinical development. There are many, many, many possibilities of what could be created in the lab. We have to have thick skin, we have to be persistent, um, and it's a multi-year process. Antibody generation used to be very empirical, very labor-intensive process. In fact, it would take us anywhere from nine to 12 months to generate first pool of antibodies. And it would further limit the number of programs that we could work on and the candidates that we could progress from a drug discovery standpoint. The longer that we have to wait for the development processes, the longer the patients have to wait for these transformative medicines. Over the past 10 to 15 years, advances in recombinant DNA technologies has allowed us to shrink our timelines for antibody generation. It is very exciting to be a scientist in this era. We're experiencing a convergence built on decades of advances in different scientific disciplines. Convergence of lab-based scientists working with computational scientists, the sheer amount of data sets that we have that's accessible to us, the compute power, the AI machine learning infrastructure and algorithms are fueling our predictive power in a way that was completely unprecedented even a few years ago. We're using artificial intelligence and machine learning in large molecule space to help us prioritize molecules for synthesis and generation that have the highest probability of success. This is removing a lot of redundant work in our organization. It's allowing us to work on more programs and it's allowing us to accelerate existing programs. We're continuously learning from that perspective. As we generate more data sets, we're updating our models to reflect these updated data sets so that they can become better in terms of predictive outcomes. We have moved from a funnel where every molecule is treated the same up front to now saying each molecule is unique. Each molecule can have its own path for decision making, and that dramatically accelerates the process. We're going in the lab and we're making things that have a higher probability of meeting the criteria that we're setting up for. And so that's a time saving, um, that's an energy saving, that, that accelerates our drug discovery process. At Bristol Myers Squibb, we have a long history of using novel technologies in all order to accelerate our drug discovery processes and improve our chances for success. We have integrated AI, machine learning, and the human component as a part of our drug discovery fabric. We view these technologies as an extension of our labs. There's a cultural component to embracing the mindset of combining human as well as computational aspects of drug discovery. And it is these synergies that's allowing us to ensure that we're not losing sight of what we already have in terms of extensive experience in drug discovery, but also the world that we live in that has incredible computational capabilities and that fuel our predictive molecule invention aspirations. We are applying what we call our predict first strategy across our small molecule portfolio. We are predicting before we synthesize on the majority of the molecules that we go into the lab and create. Just a few years ago, we were predicting maybe 5% of the molecules. 
It's also allowed us to move from a funnel-based approach to a tailored dynamic screening strategy. We are seeing at this point measurable and meaningful impact to the rate of progression and the quality of progression of our programs, and that's what we're motivated by. We want to bring more medicines to more patients faster. Today, we have the greatest predictive power at the earliest phases of testing. This is where we have the most data. I believe that as we move forward in the future, that we will improve our predictive power in the later stages of the discovery and development process. That we will be able to predict safety, that we will be able to predict developability and other aspects that today, we just don't have as much data. Typically, drug discovery timelines have been in the scale of decades, and it has been incredibly hard to truncate those timelines. For us to be able to leverage predictive molecule invention upfront allows us to accelerate drug discovery in a way that increases our chances of progressing the best molecules. I've always been a dreamer as a kid. I imagine a world where we could create and design biotherapeutics molecules in silico using our sequence and structural models that are anchored around experimental data sets to get to the therapeutic much faster. And the shorter these timelines, the better the patients are positioned in having access to these transformative therapies in the future.